Welcome to the Finding the Magic podcast, where books come alive. I'm Tricia Copeland, a fiction author and host of this show. If you love books, finding great reads, and hearing about the story behind the story directly from the authors, this is the place for you. Whether you like fantasy, science fiction, dystopian, or romance titles, I think you'll find something to love in my playlist. Listen in to discover something magical about a book or two today. Hi, and welcome to the Finding the Magic Book podcast. I have a special episode for you today. It's just me and me, me interviewing myself, because I had a new release just a couple of weeks ago, and I haven't even gotten a time to hop in and tell you guys all about it. So the new release is Perfect Office Packed by my alter ego romance pin name Maria Jane, which is a name that comes from my sister and my grandmother. So I wanted to honor those two people in my life who were big lovers of romance. And it makes me so happy that I can put their names on these romance books. So this is the second book under the Maria Jane pin name. And it is perfect office pack. Not surprisingly, it is an office romance. It also has enemies to lovers trope and a little surprise in there as far as diverse personalities so that's all I'll say about that Um, we have some diverse characters it is also the first time I have written in the third person point of view I stretched myself on this one because I really wanted to get the um, Declan character so then two main characters are Mira and Declan so I really wanted to get his voice to come through in this book and it received really great feedback on that. So um, a lot of my readers have said that they're really excited about the third person POV and that sometimes it's done not great, but in this one it was. So that makes me feel really good. Um, kudos to my editor, Joe Michaels, who obviously helps with that a lot. This is the fourth book in the Perfect Romance series. So Perfect Topics Tax is number four, but you don't have to read it in any order. This is a, I don't want to say a world I created (laughs) because it's not an alternate world. It's a contemporary romance, but I created these set of characters and each book follows a different character and their love story. So I started out writing under the pen name or my original pen name, Trisha Copeland. And the first book in this series was Perfect. I have have them all to show you here. Perfect. This is the first book of the series, and Dara McCool of Damn Cool Graphics did all my covers, so she did an awesome job. Obviously, this is my um, my author copy here, (laughs) but um, yeah, so I started out writing Perfect, and really the premise behind the book, um, Perfect is an alternate ending, choose your own ending type book, and the purpose behind that was to say, or to show that your life could look good given different choices and different stages of your life and you could find your happily ever after based on any number of different choices you made so there might not be only one perfect for you um i think when i was younger i struggled with thinking that i had to make the perfect decision and i have always had a lot of anxiety about that so or, you know, thinking that my life had to look a certain way to end up happy. <laughs> um, and obviously, that's not true. Everybody's lives look different. Um, but I wanted to be able to kind of show people or remind people, maybe, that, um, you know, making a choice, obviously, you want to make the best choice for yourself and the healthiest choice for yourself, given what is in front of you and what your life is like. Um, but it doesn't, you know, just because it, you make a hard choice, it doesn't mean that there's not going to be, you know, a happily ever after in that story, too. So Chloe is the main character in the Perfect Romance novel, Perfect, um, in the first book. And you have five different sections, and you see Chloe at different stages of her life. She starts off as a junior in college, and she gets a proposal by her high school sweetheart, which is a very sweet moment. And then... You see her make in part two. You see her make a different decision, 
So maybe she doesn't accept that high school sweetheart's proposal. She moves on and she finds another love of her life. And then in the third scenario, we see her go to Paris, which is super fun for me to create. Never been to Paris, but I super want to go. Um, so in the fourth section, we see her in New York City, and it's a, a little bit of an office romance there too. And then in the fifth scenario, we see her also in New York City, and she meets someone after she, he hits her with his bike. He's riding his bike and he hits her. Um, she's trying to cross the street. So they kind of meet in that way. And that one was a lot of fun to write too. And a lot of people assume that the last romance of the book is how she ends up or what her story ends up as. But what I really intended for the story to do, for you to pick, the reader to pick, which was their favorite, what the favorite ending they loved, um, which character was their favorite or what you would have wanted for Chloe or maybe what you would have wanted for yourself. I don't know if that's a reflection of our personal choices that we would have made too. So that was a lot of fun to write. But then in the second book, and I kind of had thought, well, I'll write a different book with each character, like a full length novel with each character from Perfect, the first book. Um, so we had um, Adam, we have Isaac, I'm not remembering them all. Basin was the last one. Um, oh, this is so bad. Anyway, we have five different potential suitors, imperfect, and I was thinking to write a book with each of those suitors. I got really overwhelmed with that and thought, you know, what if people hate all of them? So I did write Perfect Always, which is Chloe's happily ever after love story as I envisioned it. Um, obviously, some people may have chose a different road for Chloe, and that's wonderful too. But it was super fun to write her happily ever after. So that's all I'll say about that, because I don't want to give any spoilers. Um, but as I was saying before, the Perfect Romance series is about this group of friends. So Chloe has several friends, Bree, Mira, Danny, Ella, and several other friends. I just wanted to write about each of their love stories, and they're all very diverse characters. So Chloe is Asian. She's Vietnamese. Her mom came here as she was newly pregnant, or came to the United States as she was newly pregnant. And then we have Bree, who is the African-American character. And then the third book, Bree is in, as, her story is in As Close to Perfect. Yeah, there we go. And um, I had a lot of fun writing that, too. Um, and As Close to Perfect, Brie um, is kind of done with the typical guy she dates. She goes for the, the big jock guy who's really strong and macho, but that hasn't been doing good things for her. So when she meets Nate, she's not about Nate. She wants nothing to do with Nate. But she meets him again on the tennis court. And Nate's still pursuing her. And Brie's like, no, no, no. So Brie meets Steve. And I don't want to, you know, again, no spoilers, but this is fun romance. And then the fourth book in the series features Mira, who is a Hispanic character. And she is just starting a new job as a real estate agent. And she already knows that the CEO of this company was one of her professors who she thinks hated her. <laughs> His name is Declan, not to be a spoiler there. Um, she thinks he hated her. and given he's kind of a hard-ass professor, so and everybody thought he was. So that just was a mirror. Um, but then the first day, she meets Cade, who was her nemesis in real estate school and was always, they were always competing to be the top of the class. Mira got the top of the class, by the way, so that's a good thing for Mira. Um, and that's why she got hired at this best real estate firm in the city. Um, set in Lexington, Kentucky, so a little bit southern, not not really southern, I guess Lexington is more Midwest, I think, but it's still got that small townish vibe. It's not a huge city like Chicago or New York. Um, so a little bit of a small town vibe going on there, but this group of friends who always support each other and we see their different romances. So that is a lot of fun. And and if you've read my romance book before, you know I can't just write a romance book. Obviously, our love stories are one part of our lives, and we have different family situations. We have different socioeconomic backgrounds. We have different racial experiences. 
So all of those issues play into these characters and I hope, and, and, and they've been well received. So I think that it's come across that um, I have this rich set of characters. So we're gonna see where the series goes next um, in the Perfect Office Pack. We have a character, well, we saw this character in As Close to Perfect in Bree's story too. He was first introduced as Mira's boyfriend. Austin, who was from Austin, Texas, <laughs> not surprisingly. So we first saw him in A Close to Perfect in Bree's story, and then he is still the boyfriend in Perfect Office Pack. So I guess my question as to where this series goes, and I hope my readers will tell me where they want it to go, is do I, I switch and jump back to Austin? Because if you're on my newsletter subscribe list, you've read, oh, hopefully you've read Perfectly Tuned. And maybe I'll put the link to that free book in this. So if you're following my podcast, then you can read the free short story, which is set in Austin, Texas, at University of Texas, which features Mina and Connor. So Mina is also African-American character. Um, she's just coming off the death of her mother, who died from breast cancer. So she's coming off that really hard period, and she's in her junior year at the University of Texas. She's also an awesome blues singer, which I thought was you know, perfectly tuned. That's how the name came about. Um, she meets Connor, who is a straight lace, free law frat guy. So the last person you would put with Mina who um, is a blues singer, but also a business major. So she 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 rounds that up. But um, so anyway, so I could jump back to Austin, Texas and talk more about Connor and Mina and the end of their happily ever after. Or I could stay in Lexington and finish maybe Danny's story, Ella's story. Ella doesn't live in Lexington, so I don't know what I'd do with that one. But so I'm going to, Definitely, if you are not an email subscriber, please become an email subscriber if you have an opinion about this, because in the next couple of months, I'm going to be asking my readers, just like I asked them for character names, um, my readers chose Declan and Cade's character names for a perfect office pack. So just like I let my readers choose that, I'm going to let my readers choose where they want the series to go next. Do we want to stay in Lexington? I'm thinking Danny's story if we stay in Lexington. Or do we want to jump to Austin to finish Mina and Connor's story? Or can we do them at the same time? I guess it doesn't really matter. But because they don't have to be read in any order, I guess it doesn't matter. But anyway, I can only write one book at one time. So um, I'm going to be asking my readers what they want to read next. Do they want Lexington or they, do they want Austin? Do they need to figure out what happens with Nina and Connor? Because that's a complicated thing. His family's big oil. All His dad and all his brothers have always been lawyers. And they um, work for the company. No, wait. Maybe not. I didn't remember that detail right. Maybe all his brothers aren't lawyers. But his family definitely has the expectation that he will come back and work for their oil company. So... Um, yeah, so that will be a big issue for Mina and Connor, and I think in, in Perfectly Tuned, you got a sense that maybe Connor wasn't thinking he wanted to go that route, but feeling intense pressure from his family. So we'll have to see how Mina and Connor, how Connor works that out, and how Mina and Connor work that out, and how Mina feels about all of those things. So that will be explored. I haven't exactly decided how that will turn out yet. Um, so I'm going to let my readers tell me what they who which characters they want me to write next. So that will be super fun to hear what my readers want. I'm already hatching a plan for Danny's story. Yeah, I think it so Chloe's story started right after college graduation. Bree's story started about two years after that. And Mira's story taught started three years after college graduation. I think I'm going to go in reverse again for Danny's story, which will start right after graduating, right after college graduation. So that should be fun. I already have some good ideas for her significant other and a little bit different plot than I've written before. So that will be fun. 
you're just gonna have to stay tuned and wait for that. I'm think trying to now I'm trying to think of typical questions I usually ask me interviewees because that is like my script and maybe I talk too fast. Probably do talk too fast. Um, but that is the perfect always office perfect romance series, <laughs> which the latest release is perfect office text. It is contemporary romance, as I said before. It is closed door romance, as all my romances are um, clean. But there's some there's some good scenes. There's some sexy scenes, but they're always closed door. So that's PG 16, I would say PG 16. But it is a new adult story, so it is made for closer to adult reading age. If you're wanting to know that, um, thanks to CleanAuthors.com, I love using them, and all my books are featured there. As you can see, I write in several genres: dystopian fiction, YA fantasy. My writing career began with the Be Me series. You see the first book here. Is this me? I started writing in 2008. So 20, oh wow, 12, 16 years ago, I started writing that story. It took me eight years um, to write the first two books and then a couple more years to edit and decide to publish. <laughs> but that series, along with the perfect series, the Being Me series is a college romance series, so definitely PG, more, more PG-13, I guess. There are some, well, yeah, I guess it's PG-16. It's a closed door romance, too. It's contemporary romance, but in college, obviously, it follows Amanda from her freshman year to her senior year. And really, the story is a romance, but it is more than that. It's more about her coming of age, her development as a person. She struggles. Um, with a variety of challenges, including anorexia, which was my story. So it is definitely my story fictionalized. So you will see a lot of me coming out in that story. But as per, I think I said in the beginning, my romances can't just be romances. So the me series is much more of an inspirational, overcoming, recovery um, hope story, whereas the Perfect Romance series is more on the romance side, but obviously lots of character development and diversity and looking at race, religion, socioeconomics, and how all that plays into how we feel about ourselves and the outside world and other people and relationships. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And yeah, if you've read all the perfect romances and you like college romance, being me um, series is great to jump into. It starts with Is This Me? So that rounds out my romance. Um, although every one of my books has a little, little love story running through it. Because um, that's your life, right? We always have, um, you know, whether it's family, we're focusing on family or we're focusing on significant others. That's, that's part of life. We we all fall in love. <laughs> Some of us more times than others, but that's okay too. And I guess you could say, you know, if you read Perfect, you would think Chloe was crazy because she fell in love five times and who did she marry? Um, so hopefully people don't think that's too frustrating. People do get confused in that book. Perfect was the first book of the Perfect Office series. Why do I keep saying Perfect Office? Series. Perfect romance series. I'm I'm hooked on this office romances now, and I've been reading a number of them since I published my book. Maybe I'm a little bit addicted to them, but it's fun. So yeah, so perfect perfect can be confusing because the first couple of parts you start at the same place, so it looks like the same story. And it looks like you I made a mistake in the publication, but I think. By part three, part one and part two are pretty short. So by part three, people get it. They're like, oh, okay, I'm just replaying this. It's almost like Groundhog Day, except imperfect things turn out differently. So I guess it's not like Groundhog Day at all. It starts out the same, but it ends differently. So that's a little bit different and perfect. But like I said, it's that alternate ending, choose your own ending. Which love story do you think is best for Chloe? So I always love hearing people's impressions because a lot of people, like I said, a lot of people come back to me and say, oh, it was it was the last guy. It was Mason. It was number five. And I'm like, 
really? Do you think so? <laughs> but, and that's okay if you think it was number five, obviously, uh, it can read number five, but I really like to, you know, kind of challenge people to think about which love story they would have chosen, who is their favorite, and maybe think about why, um, and if it's a reflection of you. But that has, I, and this went so fast because I talk way too fast, but I, I did talk about where my writing started. The impetus for writing for me was really telling my story of recovery from anorexia. That took me a long time to write down, but I was just ready in the evening had young kids after they went to bed instead of watching Netflix and chill. I was writing my story out. It is highly fictionized, so not exactly me, not exactly, but very close. Um, so I always want to raise awareness about that mental illness, eating disorders, as well as depression and other related mental illnesses because they can really impact people's lives. So I really want to make sure and that people see that hope and that there is recovery because it really, when I was in the middle of it, it didn't feel like that. It felt like this would define my life forever and you now has a beautiful family and I have an amazing author career. So that is super fun. And I guess the other questions that I usually ask authors are about what influences them, what other books they like to read, I grew up reading mostly fantasy. I loved love poems when I was in high school for some reason. Um, I would read love, love, love poems. My mom had a book of like 500 love poems, so I would read those all the time. I was hopelessly in love. I guess it's called unrequited love with this guy in my high school, so um, maybe that's why I kept reading the love poems. Not, and not, My mom probably wouldn't have. I don't know. We didn't have really that many romances. We could check out the library. So I mostly read fantasy. I loved Mary Stewart's Crystal Cave about Merlin's young wife. I loved Lord of the Rings. I liked, yeah, that's what that's mostly what I read with the fantasy books when I read something for pleasure. In college, I couldn't read anything except my textbooks. And when I got back to it, my love of reading kind of again got spurred by Twilight, which is why I think I broke off into that fiction or fantasy series, my Kingdom Journal series, which is, I thought it was going to be a vampire series, but when I, but then it evolved into mainly a witch series, but there are vampires there. So um, that's kind of how that started. And then I got challenged in other ways with Lovelock ones. I was challenged in an anthology to write about healing, and because my background is biotech, I had to write about genetics and healing a pandemic plague, which was very eerie, given that I published that book in 2019, and then the sequel, Torch, it was the first book of Love Like Ones, the sequel, Torch, in 2020, April of 2020, right after, a month after the pandemic hit, at least in the U.S., so those haven't been as popular. I doubt I didn't want to read them and maybe hopefully coming back to those. I, I need to write the rest of the series because Gemma, who's been one of the main characters, needs to free her sister from this evil dictator who is also her uncle. So that's very confusing and challenging for all of them. <laughs> um, so yeah, I do need to write the ending to that series. It needs to have more of a happy ending than um, that it does. I'm not going to get that away too much. And I do, the only other standalone I have is Drops of Sunshine, which was my first, actually my first YA paranormal book. Um, and that was kind of fun to write because my editor was like, this is not paranormal enough. And again, I was challenged in an anthology to write a YA paranormal fantasy um so you know my I had a little bit of a paranormal element my editor came back and was like this is not enough it has to be more but Nina is in that story she's 16 she goes off to summer camp she wants to get away from her real life but obviously catches up with her when campers can read her mind and she has to figure out why this is going on and I think that's a really cool story so that's a standalone um but I love series. I 
I have a hard time letting my characters go, which is very evident in my Realm Chronicles series, which is a crossover. The Kingdom Journal series, which is the witches and vampires series, the YA fantasy series. So you find Titania in Kingdom of War, which is the finale to the Kingdom Journal series. And she is a fairy from Middle Earth. Titania gets her own series in the Realm Chronicle series, which starts with To Be a Fae Queen, which is this book right here. Um, so she gets her own series. It starts out, she's 15 years old. There's a big battle. Her father almost dies, and her father decides to hand her the crown. She's 15. All of her brothers are dead, so she's the only child to take over this throne, but there's never been a female monarch in the Fey realm. So she has many challenges which she has to face in, well, first of all, choosing if she's going to take the crown and become queen. Secondly, all the people that would oppose her and so that story, we have three books in that series now, and I'm writing the fourth book in that series. So after I write the fourth book in Realm Chronicles, I'm going to jump back to the Perfect Romance series, writing that. So hopefully both of those will come out this year in 2024. I like to write fantasy romance, fantasy romance. So both sides of my brain are happy. In the Realm Chronicles series, it started with To Be a Fae Queen, then we get To Be a Fae Guardian, and To Be a Fae Legend. And I don't want to give too much away about that book. So we have more characters coming into that series for cousins. And they will be playing a more prominent part in the next book. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And we'll just have to see where that one goes. Um, Titania needs her happily ever after as well. <laughs> I mean, the whole series arc has to be her happily ever after. Um, she's been through lots of trials and tribulations, and I really think she needs just ah, peace. <laughs> so um, I have to figure that out, too. All fun stuff. I hope you follow along to my newsletter. You get lots of freebies. You get the, as I said, Perfectly Tuned, which is the free short story that started the Perfect Romance series. Oh, I got it right. Perfect Romance series. Um so that started the Perfect Romance series. If you're a fantasy lover of witches and vampires, you get a witches and vampires, which is my witches and vampires Genesis story. Um, if you don't, it, no, it's hard to say. Some people are offended by that story because it features Lilith and Lilith leaving the Garden of Eden. So some people who favor maybe a literal interpretation of the Bible are a little bit offended by that, but it's purely fantasy, purely fiction. Obviously, there are vampires and witches. So, <laughs> um, but you know, if you talk to me at my dinner table, I will tell you vampires are real. <laughs> All my kids know that. Do I want to be a vampire? Yes, maybe I do want to be a vampire, <laughs> or I don't know, maybe a witch or fairy. I my fairies have wings, so that would be a definite plus. And in the Fae realm, they're much like humans. They have the same strengths, capabilities. But in our realm, which is Upper Earth, they have strengths, hearing, senses, like vampires do. That's a plus. As well as they can hear other creatures' thoughts. Um, and that only works in the Upper Realm for fairies. So fairies may be. I don't know. Maybe fairies may be my top choice. But I'll let you decide what your top choice would be as well. So obviously, I <laughs> I write a lot. I love writing. I love reading. I've been on a big romance kick. I think, as I said, listen to lots of audiobooks. But I don't read what I write. So if I'm writing fantasy, then I read romance. And if I'm writing romance, then I usually fantasy. So I can hop back and forth. So I, this is super fun for me to jump in. And just tell you all about where I am and my newest release, which is released on February 6th. So, again, that was perfect office packed. Now I have them out of order. Oh, I don't have them out of order. Yay, perfect office packed. Um, with Mira and Declan, third person point of view, contemporary romance, office romance, enemies to lovers. We'll tell you who between Declan and Cade. Both of our kind of enemy, friendly, frenemy enemies, frenemy enemies or who she assumes is frenemy enemies. So I, 
can't wait for you to experience that. If you have already read it, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you leave a, left a review, double, double, double thank you and hugs. And coming up next, I think we have Rose Garcia, who has also stay fantasy, YA stay fantasy. So I love reading her series. She's that's the series. Oh, now I'm trying to think of the name of the series. Oh, that's bad. Anyway, she'll be here tomorrow night. So that podcast will release next week. So I'm super excited to talk to her about her Shimmer Fae because her Shimmer Fae are from above the human realm. So my Fae live in Middle Earth and her Shimmer Fae live above the human realm. And I think I did make a reference to her Shimmer Fae in To Be a Fae Legend. So, yeah, we might see more of that. I'll have to ask her about that. That would be super fun to have, like, a crossover series of the Shimmer Fae meeting the Middle Earth Fae. The Shimmer Fae don't have wings, and they have portals that they can enter the human world. It's like through, but their portals look like a shimmer. That's why they call them Shimmer Fae. So I'm excited to have Rose Garcia, and so and then I'll be having some more authors to interview coming up soon. So thank you for tuning in. And until next time, keep finding the magic. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Finding the Magic podcast. I'm your host, author and podcaster, Trisha Copeland, and I love getting behind the scenes. If you like the podcast, make sure to subscribe and stop in each week, discover new authors and books. Thanks for listening. And until next time, keep finding the magic.